Point number two. Attitude of gratefulness that you're alive and optimism about life. Many years ago, I was building a house and I hired two workers on the same day. We'll call one John and the other Jim. When I would arrive at work in the morning, I would, uh, I would look at John. I'd say, John, how are you doing? He'd say, oh, boss, oh, my stomach hurts and my, my head hurts and <laughs> kids are not doing well. My, my wife's mad at me. Breakfast was awful. And then he'd walk inside the job. And he'd look in. Now, he was one of the guys that was supposed to kind of keep an eye on things. He'd look up and he'd go, oh, oh that cut's no good over there. And, ah, that, that baseboard's not going to work there. And, oh, the inspector's never going to buy that. Oh, my goodness. This guy, it was like, I, I'd get done with just a minute or two of him in the morning and I wanted to push him to some site of a, some part of the job site, someplace outside where we were working on this house. Where, where I didn't have to listen to him, where he couldn't infect anybody else because the guy was just, it was like he had dumped, you know, garbage on me and I wanted to, to just shake it off. The other guy, Jim, completely different. I would show up at work. He'd be there already 30 minutes. He'd have everything set up, all the equipment ready to go. I'd say, Jim, how you doing? Boss, couldn't be better. I mean, literally like that. And I'd say, well, we got this whole list of things that we got to get done today. And he'd take the list and he'd go, no problem. I got it, boss. No worries. Don't even think about it. It'll be done by tonight. How many of you got to have employees? Uh huh. How many would give your right arm if you had 10 employees like that? Yeah, absolutely. He was fantastic to be around. And I kept track of these two guys after they left my employment. John. Even though he was skilled, he should have been pulling down top dollar. John went on to have a lot of small jobs from referrals that he got, but nobody wanted him around very long, so he always, it was always small jobs. He's driving the same truck that he's driven for 30 years. He's still running. His wife divorced him. I mean, and we won't even talk about his kids. It was because his attitude was just toxic. Nobody wanted to be around him very long. Jim, on the other hand, went on to pull down contracts all around the state of California. It was just this, he just exuded something where you just, you just said, that guy's going to be a success. That guy is good at what he does. Attitude. An attitude of optimism, of gratefulness that you're alive is absolutely everything. And why does it work? Well, there's, there's nothing magical about this. It's not like, you know, a, you know, a little fairy runs over and sprinkles dust every time you say something that's positive. It really is basic physiology, and this is how it works. When you're approached with, that, with, with something, when something either negative or positive comes into your life, and you deal with it with an optimistic attitude, and you say, no, we can look at I am grateful that I'm alive, and we can deal with this situation. Do you know what happens? Your brain releases a whole set of neurotransmitters, chemicals that are released to your brain that's coursed throughout your body. They're epinephrine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and they literally create a filter for you to view life differently. You will view life differently than a negative person. You, the stuff that is coming in goes through this filter of these different chemicals and allows you to deal with life on a completely different level than those who think negatively. Now, David Lichen, who is the Professor Emeritus at the University of Minnesota. He said it like this. He said that when you think positively about life, it literally destroys the happiness. He called them the happiness thieves. Things like envy and uh, anxiety and uh, shyness and worry and concern and frustration. The positive attitude destroys those other attitudes. And what's the result? Well... You're more self-confident. You're more optimistic. And people on the outside perceive it as you're somebody that's more extroverted and friendly. What happens in your life? Well, you actually create what I call a double spiral upwards. In your own, in your own body, irregardless of the rest of the stuff that's happening around you, in your own body, what you do with the release of the chemicals is you allow yourself to think more creatively, more dynamically about what you are processing. And the result is that you can come up with ideas that you never thought you could come up with. But 
Here's the second spiral that you create. When you have this positive attitude inside, like attracts like. And you communicate to other people on a level, not even consciously. It's not like you posted a sign over your head that says, I think positively. It's nothing to do with that. There's something on a subconscious level that occurs that's much more powerful than if you were to communicate it consciously, where other people who think the same way, who think positively, who think dynamically about life, who are successful in what they do, they sense this on a level where they want to be around you. And you literally attract to you people that want to be a part of what you're doing. And the result is that you create that double spiral, not only within yourself, but socially with the people that are around you. You create it so that every time you attract somebody to you and the project is accomplished in a way that you never thought it would be, you then do what? You think more positively about the next project. And the result is that each time you cause yourself through an attitude of positiveness, an attitude of gratefulness that you're alive, you cause a completely different set of reactions in your own life. And I remember when I was young, I was not a very positive kid. And uh, going into my early teen years, I had some pretty dark moments. And my mom used to look at me and she'd say, Son, you just need to be thankful. You need to tell God you're thankful for what's happening. I look at her and I'd say, Mom, I don't feel like being thankful. And she'd say, that's okay. You just start being thankful with your mouth and your heart and your attitude will follow. Little did I know at that time that my mom was handing me one of the greatest keys to success that she ever could and that is an optimistic, attitude, one that's grateful for the life that we have, no matter what it is that comes into our life. Optimism and gratefulness. Point number two.